Hey everyone, it's Berm, and this is Level Zero Networking. In the previous videos, we created a feature-rich home router using ViOS and AdGuard Home. In this video, we'll be finishing the series by adding traffic monitoring using NTOPNG. So, what exactly is NTOPNG? NTOPNG is a network monitoring tool that uses deep packet inspection, or DPI, to identify traffic at the application layer. So, not only can you see the IP and port of your traffic, but you can see the nature of your traffic. Meaning, you can see if someone's going to YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, Disney+, etc. Now, just like with AdGuard, we'll be installing this using a container. Let's go ahead and log in again. First, we'll connect to our device again using PuTTY. And then we'll log in with our admin account. Next, we'll run the operational command add container and the image. As with AdGuard, we'll be specifying that we want the NTOP image. Let's go ahead and verify that we have the image using show container image. As long as your image is showing up, feel free to continue on. We're gonna to need to create a couple of directories inside of the config folder. Remember that we're using this folder because the contents don't get erased when we upgrade ViOS. The folder main that we are creating is gonna be used to store the general NTOP NG configuration. And the folder redis is going to be used for storing database data. Once this is done, we can configure the container. Let's go into configuration mode now. Similar to before, we'll be saying that we want NTOP NG to use host networking. Now, let me go through this command real quick. The dash dash community offers a free community license for NTOP NG, and this argument tells NTOP NG to use that. The dash I ETH1 and dash I ETH2 tells NTOP NG to monitor both ETH1 and ETH2. These are the interfaces we used for our LAN and WAN, and may be different depending on your configuration. Dash D slash var slash lib slash ntopng tells ntopng where the data is gonna be stored. This is separate from the volume mapping. The volume mapping will map this directory to a host directory, but this dash D specifically states the data directory. The dash R 127.0.0.1 colon 6379.0 at zero tells ntopng to look for redis on IP 127.0.0.1, aka localhost, and to use port 6379. The zero at the end is for the database ID. Finally, the dash w 10.0.100.1 3001 sets up the listening port for the web console. Next, we need to allow the container to create raw network sockets. This will allow the container to capture packets directly from the network interface. Then we'll tell the container what image to use. And finally, we'll configure our mappings. Destination is going to be the container volume and source will be the host volume we created with make dir. Now let's do the same for the database. In this series, we're blocking all traffic to the input firewall chain, unless it's return traffic or traffic coming in on our LAN port. For us, ETH2 we're gonna be allowing input from our LO interface. For input filter rule 1010, we'll accept the traffic and state that the inbound interface is LO. Let's go ahead and verify everything looks good. As long as it looks similar to mine, you can go ahead and commit. Another thing we need to do is allow the container to write the database file to the disk. NTOPNG will work without this, but the settings won't be saved and you'll have to change the password every time the container restarts. I wanna stress that while this will work without the file, you want this file. We're gonna modify the permissions from within the container. We'll connect to the container using run connect container in top ng from operational mode. Once in the container, we're gonna change the permissions for redis. To do this, we'll use chmod 777 and then slash var slash lib slash redis. Now let's exit out of the container and I'm gonna exit out of configuration mode. Now we'll verify the container is running with the operational command show container. It looks as though it's been up for two minutes. We're gonna come back later to verify we have the file dump.rdb. The file won't be written until it has something to write. With the container running, we can access the dashboard from our ViOS IP, colon 3001. Just as with AdGuard, I'll be using my dummy IP address. The default credentials are going to be username admin and password admin. Now this window is prompting us to change our password. Again, you want to use a complex password. 
Now, after changing our password, we'll get dropped into the dashboard. Back over the CLI, we're gonna go ahead and check that that file exists now. So we're gonna do a sudo ls slash config slash containers slash ng slash redis. And we're gonna be looking for the dump.rdb file. And there we have it. Now, back over on the GUI, so there are a couple things that we can look at over here. We've got our top flow talkers over here. Over here, we can see all of our live flows. If we go over to hosts, we can look at our hosts, MAC addresses, networks. We can look at a geo map for our traffic as well. Let's go to the hosts. As you can see here, these are devices that are talking to the router. Again, my router is not in line, but it does still have some stuff talking to it. You can find more information about the web GUI on the NTOP website. I'll put a link in the description. Also, one final note, I was able to max my one git connection even with NTOP running. In this video, we're really just going over setting up NTOP. I highly recommend looking around the dashboard and see what all you can do. Well, that's not only just the end of this video, but also the end of the series. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click the like button. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Oh, one last thing. If you have anything you'd like to see, feel free to let us know in the comments. It doesn't have to be ViOS, but it should be network related.